tell you how to put together uh, a pivot table using Excel 2010 uh, based on the questions that Chris and Sarah had uh, at the end of class today on Thursday. Uh, so I'm going to take you through a couple of different steps. Uh, I tried to go through a couple different ways that used a lot of nested ands and if and count it and stuff like that. But it's really not the most efficient way. The really most the efficient way to do it is to create a pivot table. Uh, a couple of different steps i got to go through to get there and a couple of little things along the way. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to keep up with everything. I'll try to uh, talk about the keystrokes that I use along the way too. Um, but you'll be able to go back and forth and, and follow along if there's something you missed or something you want to do. Uh, and let me know if you want more of this. And I'll try to make it available as best I can. Anyway, I'm going to dive right into the data down here. So this is the basic super test, silly test data that we had before. Uh, one of the first things you need to know about using Excel pivot tables is that every column of data needs to have a label. So whether it's uh, the super test mean, the standard deviation, whatever, uh, right here we have the people. So the people, well, they need names too. So now we've got the people and all their data and stuff like that. Now the next thing that I want to do is classify these people. And in order to do that, I've got to create a table. And now some of the stuff I'm going to do is just conventions that I've gotten used to doing from having done this for a long time. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is create a new tab or worksheet, which I just call lookup and I tend to call it in all caps. And I want to talk about uh, defining super test and defining silly test. Um, back in my data over here, I do want to name it. It's going to make doing all of this stuff from here on out a lot simpler. So all of this data, which I can highlight right here, uh, this is all super test data. Now it's the mean scores, um, but it's really the super test data that I'm most concerned with and that I'm going to be analyzing in order to classify these people. What I want to do is create a contingent ta contingency table that compares the super test mean and the silly test mean. Uh, in order to highlight all the data at once, starting up there in cell B12, hold control and shift, hit the down arrow, all of it is now highlighted. This is super test data, so I'm going to call it super test data. I could call it mean, but then we start talking about things like means and means, and, and that's not what I really want to talk about. It's the super test data that we're concerned with. Similarly here, starting in D12, control shift down. I think if you're working on a Mac, that's like command shift down, don't know for sure. Uh, I'm going to label this up in the name box to silly test data. I don't remember if I capitalize the other one, doesn't really matter. It's not capital specific, whatever that thing's called. Regardless, uh, we've got data here now. Now, what I want to do is divide up this data. First of all, figure out what is the uh, minimum of the super test data. What is the maximum of the super test data? Uh, ranges from 32 to 70. What about the silly test? This is min, max, silly test, minimum of the silly test, maximum of the silly test. Uh, goes from 45 to 91. All right. So whatever, however many ranges, bins, buckets we want to call them. However many we create, we know we have to be able to capture data that ranges from 32 to 70 and 45 to 91. Uh, a couple of people decided to classify this a couple of different ways. I'm going to go with one way that looks pretty straightforward. Remember, statistics here is part art and part numbers. Now, I can follow the 2 to the k is greater than n rule and define exactly how wide my ranges should be. Uh, but with numbers like this, it looks pretty straightforward that I can probably use the following uh, breakouts. I can say from 30 to 40 to 50 to 60. And I could go all the way up to 70, but I'm going to stop right here. Um, and when I start using the table that I'm going to create there, I'll be able to tell you why. Um, but basically, I'm going to have four levels from 30 to 40, 40 to 50, 50 to 60, and then 60 all the way up to 70, but 60 and above. Similarly, over here for silly, but instead of using four categories, I'm going to use five, 45, 55, 65, 75, and then 85 and up. As far as super goes, uh, we've got a series of different levels here. Uh, I'm going to start here at the bottom, and this is um, 
not super. This one is meh super. This is okay. Super. It's not capitalized at all. And this is super duper. We know that anything above uh, 60 is super duper. So we've got four levels. If you're between 30 and 40, you are not super. If you are between 40 and 50, you are meh super. If you are 50 to 60, you are okay super. 60 plus, you are super duper. Over here, we've got silly. Uh, this is, to use more specific language, lowest silly, low silly, medium silly, uh, high silly, and highest silly billy. Fine. Five different levels. From 45 to 55 is lowest, 55, 65, and so on. What I also want to do now is name this data the way I named the other stuff. Um, I'm going to call the super test class, class being short for classification, because it's the data I'm going to use to classify. Here, this is a silly test class, just class, silly test class. So I've got two, they're tables, they're not just columns, they've got two columns, so I can technically call it a table, call one column table a table, um, but that's really more of a footstool. Over here, now that I've got these lookup tables set, I can use the VLOOKUP function in Excel to help me classify. Now, this is another new function. I'm going to try to talk through it efficiently to give you an idea of how to get to the classification part so we can eventually do what we're trying to do here, which is get to the pivot table. I'm going to insert a column right here uh, because here's where I'm going to classify super test. This is super test classification. This time, I decided not to abbreviate it. Uh, the VLOOKUP function has four arguments. Uh, functions have arguments, and this one has four. The first thing it needs is a lookup value. What it's going to look up is 63. We're going to start by saying, all right, we're going to look up 63 in some table and use it to classify somehow. The table we're going to look it up in, because it is super test data, we're going to look it up in the super test classification table. The column index number is given that table, which is two columns, uh, anytime it uses the V lookup function, V stands for vertical, uh, it's going to start in the first column. So it's going to look for the number 63 in that column we made before, or in that table we made before, 30, 40, 50, 60. It's going to look for the number 63, or at least where to put it. We'll talk about whether or not it's looking for exactly 63 or kind of 63 when we get to the fourth argument. Uh, but for now, we're going to know we're going to look it up in the super test classification table. And when it finds what it's looking for, whether it's exact or approximate, we want it to return the appropriate value from column two, which is the second column. There are two columns. The second column is column two. And lastly, true or false, uh, approximate or exact match. If that table contained all the numbers 63, 57, 58, 70, 68, etc., that are all in column B there, then using an exact would be the appropriate one. But here, we're, I'll, I'll talk you through the logic of it. We're going to use the uh, approximate match, which is true. We can also write the number one. Uh, ah, 63 is super duper. I think that makes sense. Let's go back to the lookup here. Here's the process that it goes through. It says, find me the number 63 in the super test class table. Uh, well, 63 is greater than 40, uh, greater than 30. 63 is greater than 40. 63 is greater than 50. 63 is greater than 60. But wait, there's nowhere else for me to go. I guess I'll stop here at super duper, and I'll return the value super duper. Well, let's copy this one down just one. OK, super. OK, super. Well, how do we get from Leonardo here at 57? OK. Go back to the lookup. 57 greater than 30, greater than 40, greater than 50. Ah, not greater than 60. So it must be somewhere between 50 and 60. So it returns OK, super. This tells us one other important piece of information. It says that the upper bound or the ceiling is not included. It's looking for numbers for the not super category between 30 and 39.999 whatever doesn't include 40 as soon as it gets to 40 it becomes meh super but not not super 
So those are the floors. Those are the lowest number that you meet to be included in there, and it's going to try to get to the highest one. The other thing you need to know is that you have to build these tables in ascending order, 30, 40, 50, 60, 45, 55, 65, etc. You got to go in ascending order. If you don't, it gets confused, and we don't want to confuse it. Don't go in descending order either, because that will really confuse it, and we don't want to really confuse it either. We know how to use it. Let's use it right. Uh, I want to copy this all the way down this column so I get all 30 of these cats classified. Uh, here's how I'm going to do it. I use the control key oftentimes, holding control right now, to warp around a data set. It will take you to where the data stops, or where there is no more, or where there's a gap right here. So, I'm going to control C, copy that cell C13. Arrow once over, and go to the bottom of this column. Holding control, no shift, just control to the bottom. One over, hold control and shift this time, highlight all of them, enter. Now everything is classified. Let's do this again in real time. Go back to the top, insert column here. This is going to be my silly test classification. Equals VLOOKUP, VLOOKUP that in silly uh, classification, return the second column, true. Boom, copy, down, shift, up, done. Now I've got classification for silly as well. Well, now that I know whether, see, Einstein here is super duper and low silly, Leonardo is okay super and lowest silly, uh, I want to create the contingency table by combining those two. We've got two variables with a number of different levels, so let's combine them. Here's where it gets super simple. Highlight this data. Control, shift, highlights the rows, highlights the, oh, sorry, I, had, I must, I got over uh, Control, shift, over and down, highlighted. Uh, insert at the top, pivot table. Yeah, uh, new worksheet. This is my data. This is really, really just click OK. Uh-oh, things are crazy, I guess. Um, so I'm going to take super test classification and drop it in the column label. Silly test classification and drop it in the row, in the row label. I'm going to move me out of the way so that I can put people into values here. It's not supposed to be there. Uh, remove that. Hey, look at that. All you gotta do is right click on it, you can remove it. So now I've got um, super test classification is over here. I've got silly test classification is the row label. Silly test. Um, right here. Here's our row labels. Ah, okay, yeah, so the rows are, are here. Um, and supers are across here. You could change these around if you wanted super on one and silly on the other. Uh, this is fine for me for now. And what it's got numbers in here is counting. Oh, goodness, this really looks like a contingency table. 30 is the total number of people. Uh, but wait a minute. High, highest, low, lowest, medium. Yeah, Excel wants to alphabetize things. And that's garbage. So let's move it around so it's not alphabetized. It's mm, clunky, but mm, not horribly bad. I want highest silly ability to be at the top. I click on it with the left part. I hit it with the right part, and I'm gonna move. Uh, uh, I'll move it up. Move the highest silly ability up. Uh, then I'm gonna move the medium uh, up. What I'm doing here is burping. Excuse me. And then I'm gonna right click. Uh, anytime I want to move that up, I just right click and move it up. I'm going to move this one low. Uh, no, it's going to stay. So now I've got highest silly billy, high, medium, low, and lowest silly. Cool. Uh, super, I would prefer to have ranked uh, how I want it. So I want super duper. I want actually want super duper on the left. Uh, I like it up there because hmm, that's what I want. Uh, move it to beginning. Super duper. Uh, okay, super, meh, super, not super. I'm gonna decide that that one needs to go to the end because then this one goes to the end. I'm just right clicking and selecting where I want to move these things so I have them in the order that I want. Uh, do a little formatting here so things are roughly even. So now up here, I have, I have my completed contingency table at this point. I'm gonna do a couple other things to make it work a little nicer. Uh, no one 
is of the highest silly billy and super duper. There is one person who is okay super and the highest silly billy. I wonder who that is. So I'm just going to start mashing keys. Uh, I mean the clicking button. It creates a new sheet that tells me who this person is. Uh, it appears to be Jay Maskus, the guitar singer, lead singer, frontman of Dinosaur Jr. He has a 51 on the super test, and which gives him a classification of OK Super. Has a silly test mean of 86. All of his silly tests he took, he averaged an 86, which makes him one of the highest silly billies. Uh, as we move around here, there's someone. Ah, there's one person who is super duper, who is not very silly. Double click. Look it down here. Creates a new one. Uh, what's kind of useful for these down here is that I would probably say this person. Uh, how did we classify? Mm -hmm. Oh, why don't we label this pivot so I know how to get back here? Should have done that initially. Uh, okay, so the one okay super, but was super high silly billy is here on sheet, sheet three. So, okay super and highest silly billy. I'm gonna say okay super highest silly billy. Now I know when I go to that tab exactly what I have. You're gonna create a lot of new tabs doing it this way. Pivot, ta pivot tables are fantastic ways to sort out information. But it also means that uh, sometimes you have too much information. What was this one? This one was the one person who was super duper and lowest silly. So super duper lowest silly. Uh, this is Newton. Whether it's Isaac, Cam, Juice, I don't know. They're super duper but lowest silly. That's almost it for creating the contingency table with the pivot table. One more thing I have to recommend is the following. Uh, this table is fragile. Uh, it will break pretty easily. Uh, I highlight it all, copy it. I'm going to paste it as values down here. So at the very least, I've got the table the way it should be. Um, this table up here, uh, Jeez, I just clicked it, something happened. Okay, I clicked an empty cell and it created a sheet I didn't need. Like I said, stuff's fragile. This table now I can actually modify. If, let's say, I wanted to make that black, if I wanted to play it, paint it black, black this night, if I wanted to put block around that, if I wanted to highlight that yellow, if I wanted to make that text red, if I wanted to make those titles uh, Algerian. Uh, I can do any number of things to this table that I can't do to this table. Or if I do, uh, well, I guess I can do some of that stuff. Uh, well, maybe I decide that I don't want to include, hmm, Maybe I don't want to include the people who aren't super because they're not super. I can come over here and uncheck not super. Uh, now some of that stuff is gone or it's moved around. It tells me I have a filter here. I'm going to bring back the people who are not super. Uh, my formatting has changed. Uh, the biggest point is to copy that out and then you're, you've got some static table that's, as you can see, in the formula bar. That's just values only. Um, you can modify that however you want. Um, but this guy, again, is fragile. Things can get moved around. If that goes away, that goes there or something. If that goes over there. Now I'm just counting a total of 30 people. And that's not working exactly right. Uh, so that's just trying to answer the question there for you, uh, Chris and Sarah, and I think JT was here, and anybody else who's sticking around. Um, hope that helps.